how do you take a building that is so big and so um, antithetical to typical sustainable design strategies, you know, natural ventilation, uh, shallow footprints so you can get lots of daylighting. This, this building is big enough to hold three 747s. It has an internal volume of almost half a billion liters that has to be of air that has to be conditioned. You have to think of a way to get the most out of everything you're putting into it. One of the most obvious um, features of the building that grabs everybody the minute they walk in is the roof structure. Um, and from a sustainability point of view, the, the key thing is the use of pine beetle uh, timber. The roof is two hectares, five acres in, in size. That is a huge uh, water collecting uh, surface. The capture, the reuse, the treatment uh, of that water is a key part of the design effort. All the water from the roof is channeled off. It runs down uh, you know, the beautiful Susan Point uh, uh, runnels, exposed. It's not going into pipes. It's running across the waterfront plaza, and it's running into the, the whole uh, set of wetlands around the building. All the water on the, uh, that's falling on the north side of the roof uh, is getting taken down into uh, below ground uh, cisterns and it's being reused uh, for flushing all the toilets in the building, for example. The mechanical system uh, is designed uh, to be connected in the future to a neighborhood energy system, a neighborhood uh, micro-utility essentially. Uh, cooling uh, all that, keeping all that ice frozen uh, generates a lot of waste heat. That waste heat can be put back to use um, heating neighboring homes and businesses. It's a great platform for thinking about what the next steps might be. Uh, if, if it truly does become a hundred year building, it's got some very strong bones and a lot of uh, ability to be updated, to, to, to have new technologies uh, retrofitted into it, whether it's photovoltaics or something that we haven't even uh, heard of yet.